What's going on, Patriots fans? This is Jace back with another edition of Mock Draft Monday here on the Patriots Drive channel. Today, I got a hot rumor coming in, something that the Patriots and other people have been saying that could happen about the draft, and then also something that fans have been speculating because of a move that was made by previ or a previous team during the free agent window. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this mock draft, who you like, if you even like the idea of what I'm about to present. And um, let's get right into this mock draft. Are you tired of trying to find the best deals on tickets to your favorite events, concert, and games? Then SeatGeek is the answer. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. You can find the best deals thanks to their app and website showing you what prices are good and bad. And now you can use code PATRIOTSDRIVE for $20 off your purchase. So go ahead and get those tickets you've been eyeing because you don't want to miss out. All right, so let's jump right into this, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about the trade that was made between the Houston Texans and the Minnesota Vikings. Now, if you haven't heard, the Minnesota Vikings acquired a extra first round pick, pick number 23 for a second this year, a fourth, and then a future second. So they essentially have two first round picks. So they have pick 11 and pick 23. And as you can see on the screen, I made a trade for it. Okay. People have been saying, hey, maybe the Patriots should do this. I would imagine it's pick 11, pick 23, and a 2025 20, first. So essentially three first round picks. Now, a couple years ago, you saw the Niners move up to pick three to take the third quarterback off the board, which ended up being Trey Lance. They moved up from 12 to three and had to give up three first round picks. But that was in three straight drafts. There wasn't two in one year. I would think that pick 11 and pick 23 carries a little bit more weight because one, this is a very deep class and a very loaded draft class compared to other years at a ton of positions the Patriots need. And two, I feel like scouts like to be able and front office people like to be able to look ahead and say, hey, I know what I'm getting right here. We don't know the Vikings. Maybe if they draft a Drake May type of guy, if he's there at three, maybe they're in the NFC championship game. And so now that pick of theirs is now pick number 30 next year or 29. So you can take still close to a top 11 pick, a top or sorry, a top 10 pick. You have a top 12 pick with pick 11 plus an additional uh, first round this year in a loaded class. And you can still work with all your day two and day three picks. So I'm on board with it. I'm also totally fine with the Patriots sticking at pick three and taking Drake made Jaden Daniels, who's ever there, but this would jumpstart the Patriots rebuild. And no matter who they have at quarterback would be in such a better position than a guy like Mac Jones was because you're going to be able to surround him with talent at a ton of spots. So with that being said, let me jump into my mock draft. Okay. Now this is a guy I take at the 11th overall pick that I really haven't mocked to the Patriots because I do think it's a luxury, right? This position I'm about to take is kind of a luxury pick and there's just a lot of other holes on the Patriots, but I think tight end Brock Bowers could be one of the best playmakers in this class. I think there's Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and then Brock Bowers and Roma Dunze are right there at the bottom. Brock Bowers has presumably, or sorry, presumably been one of the best tight ends in college football, if not the best for three straight years since 2021, right? So well-rounded. He's a little bit undersized. He only measured in at six foot three, 243, but that's not why you're drafting him, okay? You're drafting this guy because last year he was seventh in yards after the catch at the tight end position. He forced the second most missed tackles. He had he was top 20 in deep yards amongst tight ends. His reception uh, percentage against single coverage was a 90. He can beat linebackers. He can beat safeties. He also um, played a limited amount of snaps because of a high ankle sprain, and he had to have that tightrope surgery. Still had 717 yards. In 2022, he had 948 yards, and in 2021, he had 882 yards, and then he had 13 touchdowns that year in 2021, seven in 2022, and six in 2023. So this is just a well-rounded guy, one a very good, reliable run blocker too, right? A lot of people are like, oh, is this like a Travis Kelsey type guy? No, like he can run block. He is really good when he's on the move in split zone and counter action. He's good when he's at the point of attack, which also helps him when he is running split zone to be able to sell and get to the flat or get to some routes like that. He's really good at setting up his routes, really good after the catch. Like I mentioned, missed tackles, yards after the reception. That's like what Travis Kelsey's known for too, is getting open and then making stuff miss after the catch. So if you take a guy like this, you look at all the teams too in the uh, conference championship games, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, 
George Kittle, Sam Laporta. You could arguably say those are top six tight ends in the NFL or, or four of the top six tight ends in the NFL, at least last year. An elite tight end does so much for your offense. So if if the Patriots do execute this trade, you take, in my opinion, the best tight end prospect in the last generation because I don't think that he was better than Kyle. Or Sorry, I think Brock Bowers was better than Kyle Pitts. I think he's better than Sam Laporta. But Sam Laporta obviously was a um, second-round pick last year, and he's been great, but I think this guy's better. So I think Brock Bowers starting it off, yeah, it's not an offensive lineman, but, man, you could take a guy like this at pick 11. It would be pretty dang good. So next pick here. I have the Patriots making another splash for a playmaker. So this is why I love the idea of trading back, right? Because yeah, you're not getting your quarterback of the future, which sucks. I'm not saying it doesn't suck, but you get to take positions that are going to help the quarterback whenever you take him. Let Jacoby play this year, if that's it, or Zappy, who's ever there, figure out quarterback next year, whether it's through free agency, whether you have another good pick, or I don't think the draft class is going to be as top loaded as last year. So maybe you can get a, quarterback one like Patrick Mahomes at pick 10 and you don't have to lose 13 games next year so you never know I have AD Mitchell going here this is a guy I would love to get at pick 34 I don't think it hap it's happening okay six foot one 205 pounds he ran a four three four in the 40 he jumped 39 and a half inches in the vertical and he had 11 foot four broad jump those are all in the uh, 85th plus percentile absolutely dominant receiver okay this guy was very good at Texas um he only had a 1.8% drop rate. So Xavier Worthy has a little bit of drop issues. Uh, A.D. Mitchell does it. A.D. Mitchell is a very sure-handed receiver. He had 16 yards, average depth of target. Um, he had the uh, top 50 in deep catches. And where this guy really stood out to me, and I really believe he is kind of like a T. Higgins comp. Like, there is a T. Higgins side that I see to him. He's a big, he's going to be an X receiver that's going to be able to go up and get the jump ball. He's going to be able to win on one on run, one routes. He started at Georgia where he won two national championships, then transferred there um, because of a family thing. Just really good. He's really good at releases off the line of scrimmage, despite how big he is. Some people might think like, oh, he's not very good at getting off the line because he's a little bigger body. No, he's fluid for a size, like really fluid T Higgins type fluid. Um, and he's a good route runner. He's not clunky. Like we saw in the kill Harry coming out. He has really good, um, you know, breaks when he's getting in and out of there. Um, and you know, good, um, cat or run after the catch too. So I think AD Mitchell at pick 23. Yeah. Maybe at the start of this process, wasn't something Patriots fans are looking at but this would be a slam dunk pick and you pair him with Brock Bowers and then you have pop Douglas still developing and Kendrick Bourne, man, I freaking love that. I think that it would be a home run for the Patriots. So those two pass catchers right there, I just don't think he can beat it. Okay. Right here at pick 34 is where I have the Patriots getting their offensive lineman. Now, if you guys know me, I'm a West coast guy. I'm very close to BYU. I've watched BYU games. So there might be a little bias here. I loved Blake Freeland coming out last year and he went in the third round to the Colts. I think Kingsley Suamatia has more athleticism than him. He didn't test like that, but I think that he's a little bit um, better there. He's explosive. He has that starting experience. Okay? He started at both right tackle and left tackle in 2022 and 2023. He transferred from Oregon. He was a five-star, six foot five, 326 pounds. He has 34 and a quarter inch arms, um, 504 in the 40 yard dash, which was one of the best of the combine for O-Lyman. 31 bench press reps. I just, Suamatia is a developmental prospect that if you give him a year, which I think you signed Michael Winu back to be the right tackle, and maybe, yeah, you can get Kingsley Suamatia starting by week eight or something, maybe after a bye, depending on when it is. Let Chuck uh, Okafor start for the Patriots who they just signed or someone else. But this is a guy that you can, like, legitimately, the upside he has and the athleticism he has is from a off or like a franchise left tackle. Very good in the run game, too. Upper body um, explosion when he's using his hands. Um, good in the run game. He can reach out and get to, um, you know, safeties or linebackers outside of him. If you're running wide zone, he can pull really well. He's just, it, it just, he is, like I mentioned, a guy that you want to take if you have a starting left tackle. Now, I know the Patriots don't have that starting left tackle, but that doesn't mean you pass on him either. You let him develop because he could be a franchise-altering starting left tackle if he reaches his potential. So I'm a big Kingsley Suamatia fan. I think he would fit here great. And as a second-round pick where you already addressed two pass catchers for the Patriots and you probably know you're not going to take a quarterback because of the trade back, just keep on loading up at positions of need, and that's what they're doing here. Okay, guys, I just mentioned 
keep on drafting positions. Now, I get it. We still have Ramondre Stevenson. We signed Antonio Gibson. But Jalen Wright's another guy that jumped out to me at the Combine. And depending on if you want to lock Ramondre up after this year, this could play a factor, right? A lot of teams don't want to pay a running back a ton of money like the running backs want. Ramondre might want to get that. So if he is, you bring in Antonio Gibson, he's here. You can bring in another lead back to sit for a year. I still don't know if Kevin Harris is that guy, but Jalen Wright of the University of Tennessee, he measured in at 5'11", 210 pounds. He ran a 4'38", 40-yard dash, 38 inches on the vertical, and 11'2 on the broad jump. He is, what makes him so interesting is he is already probably the best th three down back, in my opinion. He is known for his pass blocking. He has really good vision. Um, he was um, 34th in missed tackles force per attempt uh, at the running back position. He also was 38th in yards per route run in the passing game. Uh, eighth in yards after contact per catch. He, he or sorry, per um, attempt. He averaged four and a half yards after contact per rushing attempt. That is incredible. That is just really good stats there. He rushed for 897 yards this year. He had um, nine uh, rushing touchdowns, and he also added 17 receptions there. But like I mentioned, like this is what a guy that the Patriots are going to want. He's already good at pass pro. You're going to be able to trust him. You can throw him in there if you need a little more beef in the pass protection game instead of like Antonio Gibson. He's willing to do there. He tested really well. Top tier athlete, explosive first step. Um, and legitimate long speed with that 4.38, like really good speed. This could be a very good, long, uh, you know, careered NFL veteran running back. And so I really like Jalen Wright. I know it might not be at the top of the need, but we know the Patriots like to kind of draft these guys because they're not signing running backs to second uh, contracts. So if that's the case with Ramondre, this guy would be another explosive weapon on the offense that you could kind of mold your offense around, and you just want to find ways to get him the ball. I show some love for the defensive guys because I really don't believe that the Patriots are going to go a whole draft without taking a defensive guy. Um, and they might take him a little earlier than some people want, right? This should be an offensive heavy class just because weaponizing the offense, right? Doesn't happen in free agency. So hopefully they're looking to do that through the draft unless they make a big trade. Cam Hart, six foot three, 202 pounds, 31 inch arm length. Um, he ran a four, five, 40 yard dash four, two, four shuttle. He jumped 39 and a half and had a 10 foot 10 broad jump. Big bodied size. Now, I know we have Christian Gonzalez on the outside. I still think even though Jonathan Jones has been a really good corner um, on the outside, I still think he fits best in the slot. You can have him and Marcus Jones as your slot corners doing zone coverage or press man against a lot of guys. And then you can have Cam Hart, who's six foot three with really good length and Christian Gonzalez on the outside. He played 163 man stat snaps, which was top 25 in the country. He forced four incompletions, um, and he had 16 tackles for um, uh, TFL. So good in the run game, kind of a slot corner type of guy. Um, he had a 83.3 PFF grade in coverage this year, which is you know really good above there. Good, like I mentioned, like I just think we didn't have that long corner last year, so you go out and you take Christian Gonzalez. That already changes the room, but you still have a little bit of a smaller guy body build in that cornerback room for the Patriots right now. So take a guy like this in the fourth, let him be cornerback four. if you still feel like John Jones is the guy in um, two cornerback sets when you're just in four, three or personnel, then do that. And then when you bring in third down, obviously bring in Marcus Jones. If you ever get to dime personnel and you need bigger corners or you're going up against a guy like T Higgins, who's known as a jump ball guy or, you know, Gabe Davis is or whoever it may be. That's, you know, a little bit bigger than John Jones. Stop putting him in those situations to fail. Bring Cam Harden as the cornerback for let him have some success. So I am a real big fan of him. I think that he can do um, a lot of good things um, as a fourth round pick. I just don't know if he's going to go there. I think he's kind of shooting up draft boards. So I really do like the um there. Weaponizing the offense. I know I got an F for this one, but guys, this is a dude that was hurt uh, most of this year. Decor the Corian Clark out of UTSA. He might have been a top 100 pick if he played. Okay. He's a big weapon. Okay, he had 51 receptions and 748 yards and eight touchdowns in 2022 before he had a season in the ending injury. Six foot two and a half, 214 pounds in high school. He jumped 24 inches in the high jump. Um, he also hit 22.2 miles per hour on a GPS and he ran a 4-3 run shuttle time. They also say he ran a 4-4-9 at UTSA in the 40. Now he would have he would have tested pretty well. But again, this is a guy that didn't really play for 
UTSA this year. He was hurt a little bit, but he has all the skills to be, or sorry, not all the skills, but all the intangibles to be a really good wide receiver. I'm pulling him up on PFF, right? So last year, he had an 80.8 PFF grade. The year before that, in 2021, he had an 83 and a half PFF grade. Both those years, over 700 yards, over seven touchdowns in both of those. I think he's just an under the radar guy that should be a higher pick if he wasn't um, hurt this year and definitely has the talent to do it. But the question is, he took a year off of football. What's he going to look like? Well, Jamar Chase also took a year off of football because of COVID. And, you know, I know it's different circumstances. He's not coming off an injury. Um, Jamar Chase wasn't. So there's questions there. But for a fifth round pick for a guy that probably could have been a top 100, maybe even better just because of the athletic traits he have, he has. Yeah, let's take a flyer on him. Let's weaponize the offense. And, you know, maybe he's going to turn out better than Tyquan Thornton does. So we'll, we'll see there. Okay, going back to the well for the defensive linemen, front seven guys. I like what they the Patriots did with their edge rushers, right? They bring back Josh Uche, Amphrey Jennings. Obviously, you have Keon White and um, Matt Judon coming back. I still, I still think they need an interior run stuffing defensive line. Okay, so Jordan Jefferson, six foot three, three hundred thirteen pounds. Um, he was an All Big Twelve guy before he transferred to LSU. Really good at the point attack. Really good first step explosion. High high motor like that. This is what you want out of interior defensive line. He just keeps working. Really good laterally. Um, and he can be kind of a, a position or a scheme fit in multiple schemes. He can play in the A gap. He can play in the B gap. He can two gap. He can hold double teams, bigger bodied. I, I really like what he could do. I think he could be a good spell behind Christian Barmore. I think he could play opposite of Christian Barmore, kind of fit in that um, Devon Gotcha role behind him or, you know, fit behind where or where Lawrence Guy was because of his departure. So I like adding to the front seven. I thought originally it might be edge, but I really do believe that they added or they kept some good edge pieces that will serve as some pass rushers. And, you know, maybe they don't need there. And so they're just going to take a flyer or take a guy like George Jefferson that can come in and be a run stuffer on first and second down and then get off the field. Okay. Last one, Ethan Driscoll out of Marshall. Okay. Big offensive tackle um, out of uh, Marshall, out of the Sun Belt, six foot eight, uh, seven plus. He's not, it's, he's listed at six foot eight, but he's, under there he's like six foot seven and three quarters 313 pounds 35 and three eighths inch arms okay like i mentioned i've said this before about guys like patrick paul like you can't teach size you can't teach length and guys like that that have it i'm willing to take as a six round flyer especially at the tackle position we need that he needs better hand placement he needs to learn to have better balance he's technically not sound now he has the length and the size that Kingsley Sumatia doesn't have, but he doesn't have the athletic ability. That's why he's not going to be a second round pick. If you mold Kingsley Sumatia into what he should, what he can be with all of his potential and everything he has, he's going to be a great offensive tackle in the league. I'm not saying Ethan Driscoll can't, but he's limited athletically. But that's also why he's a six round pick. You think of guys like or Austin Stuber, who the Patriots took a couple years ago out of Michigan. Big guy that can take there. Trent Brown was a late round pick um, where he, you know, didn't test trail, but big body guy and he's made an NFL career. So I like Ethan Driscoll. You bring him in, you just get younger, maybe P squad him for a couple years, has that size and length. Let the O-line coaches work with him, see if he can develop into anything. If not, you know, it's a six round pick and you, you definitely need some tackle depth and you need some tackle help. So worst thing he does, he doesn't pan out. You weren't planning on him to start because he drafted Kingsley Sumatia. Plus you have a window at right tackle. No harm lost. It's okay. So this is the mock draft off the rumors that I think are very interesting of trading down, acquiring three first round picks. That means we would have four first round picks in the next two drafts. That is that will jumpstart. And yeah, I get it guys, but promise. I promise you eight months ago, Jaden Daniels was not a first round pick. He wasn't even a second or third. It probably. Okay. We've seen it with Zach Wilson. We've seen it with guys before, right? Kenny Pickett. Guys like that, Will Levis, even though he was a second round pick, he wasn't really talked about like that. There will be guys. There's Will Howard at Ohio State. There's Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. Shadur Sanders is going to be coming out. Dylan Gabriel out of Oregon. Carson Beck out of Georgia. There will be guys that will shoot up boards just like Jaden Daniels is. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be better than him, but every single year there are quarterbacks that are going to shoot up boards and teams are going to fall in love with. Happened with J.J. McCarthy this year. I just don't think we have to rush the quarterback thing. I know it's very important, and I agree. I'm a Drake May guy. If Drake May is there at pick three, it would be very hard for me to pass. But if you get three first-round picks for pick three and you can walk away with something like this, 
whoever's at quarterback, I'm going to have faith in because this would be a explosive weaponized offense as Elliot, as Elliot Wolf tried to say and has not delivered yet. So let me know in the comments below your thoughts, what you do with the trade, um, how interested, how interested you'd be, or if you just want to stay pat at three, that's totally fine. You know, there's teams have built with a quarterback early in the draft and hit on it and not the best team teams have also built like the Niners and uh, lions where, you know, they've built the team first and the quarterback has came after that. I don't think there's right or uh, right or wrong way. It's just your preference. So let me know down below what you think, maybe what you change about this. And of course, use code Patriots drive at seat geek. Um, and then also use, uh, or make sure you like subscribe, comment and turn that notification bell on. So when we go live, do live mock drafts, do stuff like that. You guys can be in those and stay up to date, but we of course appreciate all of your guys' support. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.